In this video, we will demonstrate how to use Rexnord's ball and roller bearing selector tool located on Rexnord.com. In order to access the ball and roller bearing selector tool, navigate to the resources tab on Rexnord.com and click on selection tools, then bearing. The selector can be launched from clicking on either the ball bearing category or the spherical roller bearing category. Click on either, then click the selector tool. After clicking on the selector tool, we will be brought to the launch page for the selector. Before proceeding, if you are not yet a registered user on Rexnord.com, click here to fill out an application to become one. When you are signed in to your Rexnord.com account, you will notice a section titled Build History. Once you have configured a bearing, you will have the option to save that configuration. We will highlight where you can save that configuration later in the video. Those builds you have saved will be shown here for you to view, edit, or delete. Clicking the view slash edit button will bring you to the selector tool with the values you had inputted before. You have the option to change any of these inputs at this time. The first two questions to be filled out are general questions about the application the bearing will be installed into. The first dropdown has two options, single bearing analysis and fan application analysis. If you are configuring bearings for a fan application, you will need to provide fan specific information into the selector in order for the tool to select a bearing that will work properly in your application. For this example, we will select fan application. The second drop down menu asks if you know what bearing you want to use. It is recommended that if this information is known to you, that you select yes. But please note that selecting no will not affect a user's experience of the selector tool. For our example, we will select yes. We can click the submit button to proceed to the bearing configuration step. Since we selected a fan application analysis, we need to input the specifications of that fan application at the top of the form. Have this information with you prior to configuring your bearing. In each field you need to input a number, you can use the arrows on the right hand side of the field to reach the needed value. Or you can click within the field and enter the value. Also note that hovering over each input field will give you a brief explanation of the information the selector is asking for. Now that we have entered all of the fan details, we can scroll or collapse the fan data section to get to the next section, bearing and drive data. Here is where we will configure the two bearings for our application, starting with the bearing series. We will completely configure bearing A and then configure bearing B. Clicking on this dropdown will give you a list of the possible bearings you can configure. To help you navigate to the bearing solution that fits your needs, you can type in the first character of the bearing series name and the selector will navigate you directly to that option. For our example, we will select a 6000 Sherlock adapter mount spherical roller bearing. Next, we need to specify the shaft size. If the bearing series you selected above is available in both imperial and metric measurements, you can click the blue box here to switch between inches and millimeters. For our example, we will select 3 and 7 16 Next is the housing style. Please note that the options available within this dropdown will change depending on the bearing series you are configuring. For our example, we will select a 4 bolt pillow block. SIF style housing. Next is the sealing type. We will select a clearance seal. You will notice that the next field, lubrication type, is already filled in with the option grease. That is because it is the only option available due to the inputs we have selected up to this point. Let us now configure bearing B. For our example, we will configure the exact same bearing as bearing A but that is not something users will be restricted to. Now that we have both bearings configured, there are a few more fields to fill out. The remaining fields ask about the radial load of the bearing, the driven and drive sheaves, L10 life, and coupling weight. 
These are all optional to fill out. It is recommended that if this information is known to you, that you input these values into the selector. As noted here, leaving these fields blank will cause no issues to the configuration of your bearing. We will input all the information we can, changing the sheave or half the coupling weight to 50 pounds, and leave the rest blank. We can then scroll to the temperature analysis data portion. Please note that when filling in temperature data, the closer you can approximate the values you input to what the bearing will actually experience within the application can lead to longer bearing life. For ambient air temperature, we will enter 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We will leave the ambient air velocity at 3.5 feet per second, but change the shaft speed to 1780 RPM. The fan airflow field is required to fill out. From this dropdown, we will select horizontal. We will leave the temperature analysis as yes. The next field is where you specify which bearing we have configured is the fixed bearing in the fan application. For our example, bearing A is our fixed bearing. We will leave shaft orientation and shaft arrangements with their defaulted values and select plain low carbon steel as our shaft material. The next section only applies to those applications where there is a cooling wheel installed. If you do not have a cooling wheel, simply leave these fields blank. For our example, we will not need a cooling wheel, so we can click next to continue. A dialog box pops up asking for shaft data entry. This value represents your shaft length in inches. We will change the defaulted value to 90. We can then click OK to proceed. Here is the results page of the two bearings that we have configured. Because we selected thermal analysis, we can click this box to see a diagram indicating estimated temperatures at different stages of the fan application. Clicking Lube Recommendations will give a detailed response for the bearing lubrication and recommendation fits for each of the bearings you have configured. Next are the two bearings we configured laid out with the specs of each. Before proceeding, it is recommended that you email the results of the configuration to yourself for your own records. Do this by clicking the Email All Results button here. If you are logged into your Rexnord.com account, you will have the option to save your configurations by clicking the Save button here. The Job Information dialog box that appears is for your records to distinguish between configurations. These fields are optional to fill out. To view the products you have configured, click the View Product button. You will be brought to that product-specific landing page. If you are not signed in to your MyRexNord account, your only option is to request a quote for this product. Scrolling down, you can view and verify the technical specifications of the product. You can view and download documentation that is product-specific. Scrolling further, you can watch any installation or maintenance videos tied directly to the product you have configured. If, however, you are signed into your MyRexNord account, you will see a few more options on the landing page. You can see pricing and availability details here. You can change the quantity of products you wish to order here. If you wish to create a quote or add this product to your cart for direct ordering, simply click the Add to Cart button. Thank you for watching Rexnord's Ball and Spherical Roller Bearing Selector Tool video. For more information or documentation, please visit rexnord.com or subscribe to Rexnord's YouTube channel to stay up to date on all installation, maintenance, and other Rexnord videos.